Hello, in this video we're going to evaluate this sum. It's the sum of cotan inverse of pi over 2n plus 1, pi, 2 pi over 2n plus 1, all the way to n pi over 2n plus 1. When I'm dealing with sums of trigonometric functions, I often use complex numbers. So what we know about the relation between complex numbers and trigonometric functions are these. Cosine of theta is e to the power of i theta plus e to the power of negative i theta over 2. And it's also the real part of e to the power of i theta because e to the power of i theta can be written as cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. And sine of theta can be written as e to the power of i theta minus e to the power of negative i theta divided by 2i. And it is in fact the imaginary part of e to the power of i theta. So e to the power of negative i theta is cosine of theta minus i sine of theta. Theta. If you want to know a little bit more about these, then there is a video, I have a video on these, the relation between complex numbers and trigonometric functions, that you can check that out. The link is on the upper right corner of the screen. Okay, so we're going to use this and relate cotan of k pi over 2n plus 1 with e to the power of i theta for an appropriate theta. So let's just start evaluating cotan of theta. Cotan of theta is cosine of theta, which is e to the power of i theta plus e to the power of negative i theta divided by 2 divided by e to the power of i theta minus e to the power of negative i theta divided by 2i. Now, clearly the two cancels and what we're left with is e to the power of i theta plus e to the power of negative i theta divided by e to the power of i theta minus e to the power of negative i theta and everything is multiplied by i. I would like to find e to the power of i theta from this formula. Of course, because I have 1 over e to the power of i theta the formula for that would be a bit messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by i and instead of evaluating e to the power of i theta, I'm going to evaluate e to the power of 2i theta. Multiply the numerator and denominator by e to the power of i theta and you would get this in the numerator and you would get this at the bottom. Now, if you evaluate e to the power of 2i theta, you get this. Cotan of theta plus i over cotan of theta minus i is e to the power of 2i theta. So you might be asking how I got this one so quickly and here is how. If you have a over b equals c over d, it's a very easy exercise in algebra that in fact if you do something to the left and do the same thing to the numerator and denominator of the right, then they would be equal. In this case what I did was I added the numerator and denominator on the left and then I also subtracted at the bottom. So that gives me C plus D over C minus D. This is pretty easy to check. On the left here, you get cotan of theta plus I over cotan of theta minus I. On the right, you get the sum of the numerator and denominator, which is 2 e to the power of 2 I theta, and the difference, which is 2. So we get that. So to summarize, we get e to the power of 2 I theta equals cotan of theta plus I over cotan of theta minus i. And this equality holds for every theta. Now, if I plug in theta, the angles that they gave me, k pi over 2m plus 1, of course the k that they gave me ranged from 1 to m. I'm able to understand this guy. This guy is a root of unity. So if you take e to the power of 2i k pi over 2m plus 1, if you raise that to the power of 2m plus 1, you get 1. But the problem now is we have only n roots here, but we need 2m plus 1 root for a polynomial of degree 2m plus 1. So here is how I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to first write down the equation. So what I get is cotan of theta plus i over cotan of theta minus i. All of that raised to the power of 2m plus 1 is in fact equal to 1 if theta is any of these angles k pi over 2m plus 1 and this k could be any integer. It could be anywhere from 1 to 2m. Of course you don't want it to be a multiple of pi because for multiples of pi sine which is in the denominator of cotan is 0. So you want to avoid those. But if you look at any of these you have this equality. So in other words if you consider this equation We know there are 2m plus 1 roots here, 
but we only found 2m roots so why is it that this doesn't have 2m plus 1 roots maybe it does and we are missing that but it becomes clear if you clear the denominator so if you clear the denominator you get this bring z, z minus i to the power of 2m plus 1 to the left and you get this equality so this equality holds for any of those z's so here is now what I got if you expand this expression we get z to the power of 2m plus 1 plus 2m plus 1 choose 1 z to the power of 2m times i plus 2m plus 1 choose 2 z to the power of 2m minus 1 i squared plus 2m plus 1 choose 3 z to the power of 2m minus 2 i cubed plus etc and the next terms that are coming from the other sum are going to be z to the power of 2m plus 1 plus 2m plus 1 choose 1 z to the power of 2m times minus i plus 2m plus 1 choose 2 z to the power of 2m minus 1 negative i squared plus 2m plus 1 choose 3 z to the power of 2m minus 2 negative i cubed plus etc so this is equal to 0 for z equals cotan of theta and theta is pi k over 2m plus 1 k ranges from 1 to 2m okay so now one thing is that these two cancel so in fact this uh, polynomial is of degree 2m not 2m plus 1 the other thing is these cotans cotan of k pi over 2m plus 1 these are distinct in fact because the angles pi k over 2m plus 1 they are between 0 and pi and in that interval cotan is 1 to 1 so we found 2m plus 1 roots of that back to the sum that we wanted to evaluate it was the sum cotan squared of pi k over 2m plus 1 k ranges from 1 to m okay now this is only the part in the first quadrant if you write down the part in the second quadrant that's just the mirror image of these so this is just one half of the sum k equals 1 to 2 m cotan squared of pi k over 2 m plus 1 and this is not very difficult to see because if you look at cotan of let's say m plus 1 pi over 2m plus 1 that is just negative cotan of m pi over 2m plus 1 etc so their squares are the same which means if I find the squares of the cotans of pi k over 2m plus 1 from 1 to 2m and divided by 2 then I will get the sum that I was looking for now the good thing is these are all roots of this equation this huge equation that I got so let's see how we can find the sum of the squares of roots of an equation we can do that by Vieta's formulas so if you look at the sum of cotan squared of pi k over 2m plus 1 k ranges from 1 to 2m this is going to be the sum of cotan of pi k over 2m plus 1 squared minus twice the sum of products cotan of pi k over 2m plus 1 times cotan of pi l over 2m plus 1 so I'm gonna put it down here and of course k is less than l okay so how do we evaluate this the first one is just the term the second term so if you look at the terms if you simplify this this term is i squared this is also i squared both of them are negative ones so these two cancel the leading term is double this the next term is just zero so by Vieta's formula the sum of the roots is just zero so this is just zero squared minus two times okay so the next term is the coefficient of z to the power of 2m minus 2 this minus that divided by the leading coefficient leading coefficient is 2 times 2m choose 2m plus 1 choose 1 times i 
So that's the leading coefficient. 2 times 2n plus 1, choose 1 times i. And the coefficient that I want in the numerator is 2 times 2n plus 1, choose 3 times i cubed. Okay, so that's pretty good. So let's evaluate this and see what we get. 2's cancel here. Negative 1 cancels. I also cancel. We get 2 times 2m plus 1, 2m, 2m minus 1, divided by 6. This is the numerator. And then the denominator is 2m plus 1. If we simplify that, we get 2m times 2m minus 1, divided by 3. So if you divide this by 2, we get the answer. So the answer is m times 2m minus 1 divided by 3. And that is our final answer. In the next video, I'm going to use this equality that I found to find the sum of the reciprocals of squares of positive integers. This is a very famous sum, but it's a very elementary proof that I'm going to provide. If you like this video, I would love it if you could leave your feedback in the comment section below this video or simply hit the like button. That way I would know what helps you and I keep creating contents that benefit you the most. It would also help others find this video. So I will see you in the next video.